Here at Kew Gardens, we have a massive amount of the diversity of plant life on display around us. But did you know that hidden below us, there is a world of microscopic fungi that are helping our ecosystems thrive? Let's dig deeper. Hello, my name is Ella, and I'm a research assistant at Kew Gardens. Here at the Kew Mycorrhizal Ecology Lab, we sift through bags and bags of soil looking for tiny microscopic fungi, some of which can be up to eight times thinner than the width of a human hair. It is estimated that around 90% of plant species on Earth have mycorrhizal fungi associated with their roots. So to put it simply, mycorrhizal fungi grow with the roots of plants and help them to access nutrients in the soil. And then in return, the plants will give the fungi different molecules, usually uh, sugars from photosynthesis. So everybody's happy. Fungi in general are just so important in ecosystems and they are really understudied. And I think that mycorrhizal fungi in particular are really interesting because of the fact that they are connected with plants. So it's sort of easier to conceptualize how they're helping the environment. So even the word itself uh, can give us a hint as to what these fungi are doing. The word mycorrhizal comes from the Latin word for fungi, myco, and then the Greek word for root is rhiza. So together, mycorrhiza means fungi root. These mycorrhizas form huge complex system beneath our feet called mycelium. These fungal networks can cover 700 times more soil than plant roots alone. There are a few different types of mycorrhizal fungi, and one of the main splits is ectomycorrhizae versus endomycorrhizae. What I'm holding here is an ectomycorrhiza, and it grows on the outside of the root, so you can actually see it with the naked eye if you look really close. Endomycorrhiza are inside of the root, so you have to use a microscope to see those. So the fossil record shows that these tiny fungi have been working with plants for a really long time. Ectomycorrhizas have been found in the Jurassic period at the time when dinosaurs were alive. But endomycorrhizas are actually from even earlier and there's evidence that they were probably working with some of the first ever uh, land plants. On field work, somewhere where we're interested in, the first thing we would have to do is sample the soil. We would take a soil core um, and we would just take it and push it into the earth. And then when we pull it back out again, this section would be full of soil. And then that's the soil that we would take, put into a bag and bring to the lab to process. Then we would put that soil in a sieve like this. Um, and we use this so that we can rinse the soil off and see all the things that are in it. So what we're interested in roots, you get all kinds of things in there sometimes, but what we're interested in is the roots. Um, and then we would place that under a microscope like this and that would allow us to look at what we're seeing in a bit more detail and be able to select the type of roots that we're looking for if we have a specific type or just anything that looks living and healthy that we'd be able to work on. And when you're first starting, figuring out the difference between a stick and a root is actually a lot harder than you'd think. Um, we get little bits of grass, all kinds of strange other fungi like plant pathogens and things, but then we do also get a lot of bugs. Um, when you're looking at a particular kind of mycorrhizal fungi, they sometimes form these like things called rhizomorphs, which look kind of like strings. They're strings of hyphae that have sort of weaved together, but sometimes you'll see like a long line of something that's a different color from the soil and you'll be like, oh, a great rhizomorph, and then it's actually just a strip of plastic. So that's always really disappointing. After that, we would take those roots and put them into a dish like this, a small Petri dish, um, and that allows us to look at them even more close up and to either sample them for some kind of uh, DNA testing or to be able to sample them for other things like making microscope slides. So these are tiny roots from a tree that have small pieces of ectomycorrhiza on them. And I'm trying to look at some of the root tips and see if I can recognize that they have ectomycorrhizas growing on top. Um, and they are kind of a bit chunkier or rounder than the root itself. Sometimes they're a different color. Um, and that's the kinds of things that we're looking for. And a tip of ectomycorrhiza would be what we would sequence if we were taking it for DNA analysis. So here at Q, we carry out research to try to understand better how mycorrhizal fungi help to shape our world. And this includes a lot of work where we're looking at the carbon cycle and the nutrient cycle. Um, 
partly because these are really important for understanding human impacts. So the carbon cycle is very important for understanding how important mycorrhizal fungi are to carbon sequestration and storage and helping to minimize the CO2 in the atmosphere. And then uh, obviously the nutrient cycle, we do have to deal with the impacts of human pollution. So understanding how mycorrhizal fungi interact with nitrogen and other kinds of chemicals in the soil is really important to understand. And the Mycorrhizal Ecology Lab as a whole has projects that work in different types of ecosystems, like forests versus heathlands versus grasslands. And we also work in all different parts of the world, a lot in Europe, a lot in England, and also in some other places. Um, so the samples come from all over the place. The project that I work on, we just get samples from England, um, but there are samples, a lot of which come from Europe, where people from the team will go and sample there. There's been uh, quite a bit of work in Norway on heathlands, and then there's actually one person who's doing a project in the Congo right now. Soil from different parts of England does kind of seem different based on the habitat. We've started to get a sense of our favorite and our least favorite types to some degree. So thank you so much for joining me uh, to dig deeper into mycorrhizal fungi. Next time you see a beautiful plant, don't forget to thank the fungi that made it possible. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Dig Deeper. To learn more about mycorrhiza and its role in the carbon cycle, visit Q's new carbon garden, open now.